Hello and welcome to the Villa Park Podcast. It's me, Rich, and European football is back. If this is your preview to Ajax against Aston Villa in the Europa Conference League. And uh, to go through, uh, preview the match, I have the main men, Martin and Max. Um, so we're going to get right into it. But before we do, make sure you smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We are on our route to three and a half thousand subscribers. And we might even do a special show when we hit three and a half thousand. And um, also, if you want to become a member, um, please do click the join button. We have uh, our um, our draw for the um, the exclusive playing cards from uh, Matty Seven Two Three. You should have seen his designs, his prints on um, prints and designs on Twitter. They're excellent, so you get the chance to win one of those. Um, a members only prize draw, so that will be um, announced on. Sun after Sunday's match reaction show, so do um, get involved in that. Um, so yes, boys, Martin, I'll come to you first. How are you doing? And uh, exciting times, Villa at Villa at the moment. Yeah, I'm doing good. Uh, thanks very much, Rich. Uh, exciting times for Aston Villa, you know, off a good win away from home against Luton, which no easy place to go to. Um, but now we look forward to an exciting uh, tie in the Conference League against Ajax, which I'm sure a lot of fans this morning or yesterday uh, on the way now to, to Netherlands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, some are, I have seen some pictures. Some are knee deep in their pints already, so I, I don't blame them. <laughs> some might be knee deep in something else. Some, but, some yeah. are waking up pretty hungover today. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yes, Max... Um, talking about the the excitement and the draw you know obviously you know when the playoff round was happening Ajax kind of you know just just managed to get through against Bodo Glimt and we were thinking oh do we go for this team do we would we like this team and it was obviously I think it was written in the stars that the, the glamour tie Aston Villa against Ajax would be the one um but you might as well start with the biggest you know the arguably the biggest team in in the in the competitions um that are left it is the most Villa thing ever that we would draw the biggest team in the first f- first possible round, isn't it, really? But, yeah, I mean, as you say, you've got to play everyone once pretty, if you're going to win it. So, I mean, I think I'd rather have had Bodo glimped, but, I mean, I'll take... I mean, mm-hmm. I'm just jealous. I'm not I'm not going to see Iron Cross Arena personally. I want to be yeah. one of them people. I want to be one of them people in Amsterdam having a beer at 10 in the morning personally. I know, I know. The the old obligatory airport airport pint pictures exactly. have been happening over the last two days, and then the chanting and the singing yesterday in Amsterdam. So, yeah, it was a uh, it, it it does it does um make me a wee bit jealous. Um, but you know we'll 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 still be there in spirit, of course, of course. Um, but yeah, Martin, with regards to Ajax, um, we were chatting, you know, before we started the show, um. Had a bit of a mixed start to mixed season so far. Um, and, you know, the name Ajax obviously sends, you know, shivers down, you know, the spine in terms of past teams I've had in Europe and past European glories. But while we shouldn't take them lightly, this isn't an Ajax team of, of old, so we say. No, absolutely not. And, and they've obviously had a bit of a, a poor season by their standards, should I say, because they... Obviously, no, they have their expectation that they should be winning the league year in, year out. And rightly so. They are the best team in the Netherlands, regardless of the form this year. Um, <clears throat> but they, they had started poorly. They lost six on the bounce in the league, went unbeaten in 12. And now they've only won one in their last four. But like I said, they're not to be taken for granted, Ajax, because, you know, in Europe, you never know that they, they, they could turn up. It's, it's one of them things that they have a, a cup now to play for, which can ultimately salvage their season. Now, I know they sacked their manager um, through the season, which he was very poor. And then when the new manager came in, they, they were doing very well. Now, like I said, they're, they're hitting a little bit of dip in form, which which happens. But, um, you know, this is this is a game, but I don't think we should be taken lightly because I've seen this off the thing that Villa are 84% likely to yeah, go through the next yeah. round, which... I'm not reading into it because, you know, it, it, you just never know what's going to happen because 16% can still be fairly scary in terms of football. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, if games were played on statistics, if games were played on played on paper, it wouldn't be very interesting, would it? So absolutely not. Um, Max, they have a few players that are kind of fairly familiar with, um, you know, Premier League 
and English supporters, Tuba, Akpam, Jordan Henderson, obviously, Stephen Bergwijn, you know, players that have, you know, had decent careers in, in the Premier League um, and, and, and players that we, we're quite familiar with. You know, obviously, Bergwijn didn't quite do it at at, um, at Spurs, but had, had moments. Um, Henderson, obviously, a Liverpool legend. Uh, Akpam, I know, I think it was Middlesbrough, wasn't it? He scored goals. He was at, at Middlesbrough, yeah, and then he moved oh, to Ajax. Oh, re- pretty, pretty decent, pretty decent players. Um, so not again, like I said to Martin, not ones to be taken lightly. No, I mean there are five at the back in the last few last few weeks since the new manager came in, which in I mean we struggled against at times in the past however long. So. It's not exactly like it's going to be an easy game. I mean, there's still Ajax. It's still you still at the Iron Cruyff Arena. It's still a, a prospect. Well, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, fifty odd thousand fans or whatever. It's it's a, it's a yeah. big it's a big old stadium. Yeah. I mean, the the only I mean, we kind of made AZ Alkmaar look not that great, considering they've got quite a lot of pedigree in Europe. And I mean, they beat Ajax two 0 in the few, like last week. So if you look into that, then it's quite, it might seem a bit better than it is. But I mean. They just haven't got that many like net, like to the like general fan of the, they haven't got very many like names that you'd like the ones other than the ones you've named they've got a lot of like new players that are coming through like Kenny Taylor is one of their best players like I don't think most people would have heard of him he's a like an attacking mm-hmm. midfielder he's only like twenty one most people wouldn't have heard of him and stuff like that so they're kind of bloody new talent and like I mean they've got uh, Brian Bobby Bobby who's probably like their their best star at the minute I mean and he's been. He's kind of come out of nowhere, and then he's got 15 goals, seven assists in the area of his So he's obviously a threat just on his own. And then Akpom's not starting many games, but as an option from the bench, t- championship player of the season last season. So he's no mug either. So they've got a lot of decent players, um, even even if most people might not have heard of them as a general, just as a general fan. Yeah, mm. yeah, Martin, you you wanted. Pick, picked out uh, Brobby. I've just put his picture up there. You know, like like uh, Max says, there fifteen goals, seven assists. Regardless of who we're playing at the back, and we'll get into kind of the potential starting lineups. But he he will be a problem. Like you know, goal scorers are always and it are always a problem. And yeah, it's um, I'm sure he'll be up for the game. Absolutely, it doesn't matter what league you're in. If you're a top goal scorer, like for your club, or potentially in the race for the golden boot for the league. It, they are going to cause problems in, in these type of games because they'll be up for it. They want to play in the biggest games, the top goal scorers and prove themselves. They don't they don't just think that they can do it in their own league. They can do it in Europe. And, you know, I'm not saying he's pushing for a move. I think he's in great form at the minute. But if he keeps going the way he's going, I think other clubs will notice it in the mm-hmm. summer and go, go uh, this, this lad is obviously a goal scorer. So w- one of the teams might pick him up. Yeah. Absolutely, you know that's that's I guess where the, the the Ajax teams of old, you know, they created these players that that mm. won leagues, were competed in Champions League, won Champions League, but then went on to to kind of then create money and wealth for the other players to come through, and that was the the famed Ajax yeah. academy. And so, if you look, yeah, and if you look at the list of them, like R nine, Suarez, Slatan, Ibrahimovic, like these are players that who started off in Ajax. Well, maybe not um Suarez and well actually no they didn't really start at Ajax but like they, they went to Ajax like, yeah, not yeah, really yeah, as yeah. the known yeah. and yeah went on to into this superstardom from Ajax and that's something Ajax has always done not just like bringing in players but even for their academies they just have this superstardom factor about them that when their player is there and they're on form they go on to excel somewhere else so obviously they're doing the right things for development for players in terms of seeing them through yeah yeah absolutely absolutely um on to Villa um now Emery in his press conference mentioned kind of Jacob Ramsey um not being available for this particular game but the injury not as bad as as we as we think it's not the same thing and he, he could be fit for Sunday um Max how how do you think he approaches this because I I did a bit of an article like for the for the BBC website yesterday in terms of like it's so difficult to determine which one is most important, but what he's got at the moment is he, he has got a little bit of wriggle room because there are players coming back to training, like the, the Durans, the Carlos's, you know, Diaby contributed to a goal on, 
on on Saturday. Dina scored, so he's got a little bit of wriggle room to kind of bring some squad players in, shall we say, that might not impact the the, the performance level. So, what what mm-hmm. would you think he's going to do in terms of approaching the game? I think it will stay similar. To be honest, I don't, I can't, can't see there being like a whole like. It's like, I know, well, we haven't got the players at the minute anyway, but like a whole like 11 for 11 swap kind of thing. But Oh, yeah. No, no. I can, no, I don't. I yeah. can see like yeah. Dinier coming back in, maybe a Robinum gets a game potentially, that kind of thing. Um, especially with like players like Tielemans, who has come back from an injury and since he's been back, he's kind of played every minute of every game. Um, yeah. And maybe, I mean, the problem is, like I'd say like maybe Diaby comes back in. But Bailey's just so like influential at the minute. It's really hard to say that you wouldn't want him playing. So it's like it's a toss up between whether you get these get players some minutes who probably haven't got some, or do you take and but then you've got to lose your most important players out of your mm. team. So it's a balancing act. But I, I wouldn't mind seeing maybe like <clears throat> maybe DRB comes in. I wouldn't mind seeing Rogers play actually in. Mm. Next to Watkins, if Tielem, let's say Tielemans was to drop out, get get him some rest and give what uh, Rogers a go because I think he actually performed quite well. Not he so did. much in the second, not so much in the second half, but especially in the, like the first when he first came on, he looked he looked a threat for a decent while. Yeah, he did. He did, and if you look at it across the the, the time frame that he played, you know, sixty minutes in a Premier League game, it's expected that he probably is going to tire a little bit. He wouldn't have been planning on playing that long you know so I do I do understand and he was when you look at his kind of highlight reel he was actually involved in a lot of attacking play so yeah that that mm. that, that I think was good Martin before we get your predicted lineup on in terms of like approach to the game regardless of the, of, of the players what what do you think our approach is going to be in terms of you know this it being a it being a first leg away from home. Do you go out and try and get the game won, or do you kind of be really conservative and and, and get a a result that you can take back to Villa Park and and kind of go for it there? I think you should try and get the game won because I think it sends a message then to all the other teams across the conference league that we're we're here to win it. Like if we only go into it with a mindset, oh let's try and get a result, you get punished for it. I think personally you should go for the the game won in the first leg. I know it might not create much of an atmosphere in the second leg of Villa Park, but at least it gives you that security that we're into the next round and you know, and then we go into that Tottenham game beaming a confidence that we've just after smacking Ajax. I'm not saying that we will, but on the hypothetical terms that we're just after smacking Ajax. Now we're really confident going into the Spurs game. And that's why I think we should go in with a, a strong start in the lineup. Because I know a lot of fan bases will want, oh, let's rest him, let's rest him. But there's a competition here to be won. And if you want to win these competitions, we have to go with the stronger lineups now because we're in the knockout stages. There is no room for, you can get minutes here, you can get minutes there. This is not an experiment in time now in the Conference League. Mm-hmm. This is now where we have to play a strong team. I know, don't get me wrong, I wouldn't mind resting one or two, but you still have to go with as strong as possible. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, let's get your um, your predicted eleven up, Martin, and then you talk us through, and then I'll put mine mine up in a second. Mm. Yeah, like I said, we want to go with the the strongest team possible, which Emmy Martinez, Goals and Coles, Cash, Conza. The only player, like I say, I'd rest there would be uh, Pau Torres for Sunday, which uh, that brings in. Langley, which who has been excellent as of late defensively and passing the ball forward, he, he really has been a very good asset to to us in the last few weeks. Dina comes back in for his winning goal against Luton. I think he deserves it. I think he deserves a chance now to cement his place in the starting lineup. Midfield partnership of Louise and McGain again. I think they've worked really well in the last few weeks. I know there's always been talks that Louise isn't really maybe can't do his flea flow and roll without Kamara, but I think McGinn has been a real compliment to him. And with the capacity that McGinn has, he's cherishing every role he gets because he wants to show he's a leader on the pitch. I don't think we should drop Bailey because, he, like Max said, he's so influential at the moment. And I think if you want this game won, I think Bailey has to start. T Limits for me has to come in. He can unlock a pass because Ajax are playing five at the back, and T Limits has the eye for a pass to unlock the defense, which I think is going to be crucial, hence why Ollie Watkins should start. And then Diaby comes in for me. I think 
don't play Ramsey. I know Ramsey's not available, but I think Diaby should come in for myself because he, like he got the assist there for the goal. I think he deserves to get more minutes under his belt now. Like he's enjoyed these little cameo roles as of late, but and he's obviously provided in them roles. And now I think it's time for him to get himself back into that starting eleven and try to cement this place. Yeah, no, I uh, not a bad not a bad side. I'll uh, I'll put mine on that. Uh in a second and then max you can kind of see which one you think uh is most realistic or which one you would go for in terms of if you were in i emery so i've not gone too different to um to you um uh uh martin, martin. but i've gone <laughs> emmy martinez in goal sorry just i <laughs> just had a brain freeze there yeah, you, you, you had a brain freeze there <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i should have um, said kevin and you would have went along with it <laughs> yeah yeah, I mean, mine is a goal. Matty Cash, uh, right back, uh, Conza, Longley, um, and uh, Dina. So, uh, same kind of back five. Where I've slightly changed, I've got McGinn and Irig Bonham in the midfield, um, Rogers and Tielemans as the front kind of two, uh, the two kind of number eight, and then DRB, um, uh, up with Watkins. So, a couple of changes in midfield, I think maybe. Look, Louise probably starts, but I just thought maybe with Spurs in mind for for Sunday, and then depending on how we're getting on in the game, I've known that um, Louise has come on, like send the cavalry on, you know, Louise and Bailey coming on with say half an hour to go if we need a goal. Um, you've got some weapons off the bench to to bring on, so that that was my that was kind of my thought process, um, and I thought Tim did okay when he when he came on against Luton and. And maybe maybe get some minutes, but I, yeah, I think probably Louis starts. But you, you just like like I say, when he has had rest, it's been in in the Conference League. But I totally agree with you, Martin. It's it's not no time for messing about now. Um, oh. So yeah, uh, it, it, it is it is it is time for uh, all action. So Max, any any thoughts from you on those two starting lineups? I mean, other than I probably as I said, I might have Rogers in for Tiedemans. I just think. That's the only thing I might, and Digne is the only other one. Um, mm. I just think that he's played so much, and he has got a checkered injury record even at Villa. So I think maybe, but I mean, and then he's a player you can bring on. And as yeah. I said, that eye for a pass, especially against tied legs in later in the game, could be the difference towards the end. I mean, yeah, selfishly, I mean, I quite like it to be quite a a bit of atmosphere at the game next week. But if it's if we win like three 0 and it's dead next week, I'll take that as well. So. Oh, it's still be a great atmosphere. It's still gonna be a great atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, quickly before before we get into kind of the the score predictions to finish finish up the show, a uh, couple couple of little points. We've both gone with Watkins up top, Martin. Um, obviously he's massively informed. John Duran in back in training now. Probably a little bit too early for him to be considered for for starting. But when you got when you're scoring goals like Watkins is, you just want to keep playing, don't you? Absolutely, and you've seen his injury resistance in the last like few years. When has he ever really missed a game through injury? He hasn't. He's just like unbelievably fit, and he re- and you can probably tell that he really looks after himself, and he's in flying form at the minute. And hopefully, he gets twenty just for every one of you, so that Sam can come on here and all the comments just. <laughs> he's go, already Whoop! prepping himself. He's oh, already he's all right. Don't himself. worry. It's like a, ladies and gentlemen, it's like a wedding speech when you get the best man stuff <laughs> and all. That. And he's going to get the piece of paper and he's going to go, uh, "Thank you, Ollie Watkins, for getting twenty goals. Thank you for your comments of and naming all the people." So you're going to get loads of thank yous and sorries. It's, it's just going to be brilliant when I start watching it. I'm going to get the popcorn and all I am. And but like yeah, but like I said, I mean Ollie Watkins, he's in flying form, and I think that. It's just too good to be resting. Like if he's on that momentum, keep him on it. That's what I say. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so before we get our score predictions in, guys, make sure you do hit the like button, hit that subscribe button. We are um, motoring past uh, three thousand four hundred already, so we're on the road to on the road to three and a half. And uh, obviously, we want to push to hit four four K. So, like, subscribe, and comment below your score predictions, your thoughts on tonight's game. Um, it's a massive game. You know, what would you do in terms of uh, starting lineups? And um, and yeah, what do you think the the, the score line is going to be? So, Max, I'll come to you first. What are your thoughts for tonight's uh, first leg? 
I don't. I, I can't say that I've watched a lot of IX as a general rule, like this season, really. So I don't. I don't really know what they bring. But I mean, just looking at their form, I'd say maybe I take like a one, like a one nil. Maybe we get we get one, and then just kind and then try and sit on that. I'm not really sure. I'd probably say one nil just to be safe. <laughs> nice one. And who scores for you? Who gets the goal? It's got to be, it's got to be Watkins in it at this point. Mm. Watkins one nil. Take it, take it back to Villa Park. That's a nice, uh, that's a nice score. Martin, what about you, mate? I'm not going to go safe. I'm going to be a bit more confident in this. I'm going to go three one. Uh, I think Watkins will get one. I think Bailey will get one, and I'd like to see Telemans get one himself because I do think we do concede goals. It's it's just been the nature at this type of minute that a clean sheet is hard to come by. It's hard to come by for any team. So I think 3-1 would be the uh, scoreline for me. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go much like the last meeting um, hmm. between uh, Aston Villa and Ajax. I'm going to go 2-1 Villa. Um, I think it's going to be a f- pretty tight game. I think obviously Ajax will come out and try and get off to a fast start. I think it'd be up to us to kind of quieten them down a little bit, keep possession. Um, but I think with the strikers that are in form, I think Brobby will cause problems. So I think he will get a goal. I think Watkins will mm. get a goal. And um, I think probably one of the, if, if say, um, if it's Diaby on the bench first or Bailey on the bench, I think one of those comes on and, and makes the difference. So I've obviously gone with Bailey off the bench. So I think he will score off the bench. Um, to get the winner. Um, so yeah, 2-1 Villa. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's fantastic, isn't it? Back into your European competition. We've got a huge week ahead. We can we can take a big step to get through to the, the quarterfinals of the Europa Conference League. We can take a massive step to get for, through and in, uh, get into the Champions League. So uh, on Sunday. So yeah, huge, huge week. And this is what we want, isn't it, boys? These are the types of games that we want. This is what we this is what we toiled away in the championship for three years for to get the moments hmm. like this, isn't it, lads? So yeah, yeah we, we went from absolutely. our big week to playing like Ipswich Town and and you know Coventry City to Ajax and Spurs. Like this is the levels now that we're we're playing in. Exactly, exactly. Well, look, we will be back with. Uh, I'll be back tonight with the instant match reaction. Um, we'll also have we'll maybe try and do a bit of a full match reaction depending on the game. We'll obviously do Tottenham preview as well. So loads and loads and loads of shows to come. So make sure you um, you liking, subscribing, and hit the no- notification bell so you know when our shows are coming up. Boys, thank you very much. Thank you all for watching. And as always, remember we all follow the Villa. <laughs>